All right, Android 16, it's here. And as usual, if you are having a Pixel phone, you are probably already seeing it or it will be hitting your device any day now. For everyone else, patience is the key. You may get later this year or maybe early next year. Now, you might be thinking, where's the big visual splash? And you're right to feel about that. After Android 12, Android 16 is the major under the hood update. But that flashy new Material 3 expressive design language, that's not showing up until September this year, as it is still in beta phase and it requires more attention from Google. I know it is a bit bummer for people who are waiting for it desperately, but trust me on this one. This initial Android 16 release is laying the groundwork. It is setting the stage for what's coming, preparing your device for that full Material 3 expressive overhaul. And speaking of that, make sure you have subscribed to the channel for all the future Android updates, as we will be diving deep into them as they roll out. But before we dive into the new features, let's talk about some older problems that have been bugging Pixel users, including myself, on the older devices. On my Pixel 7, the two most important aspects of unlocking your device are finally resolved. Seriously, the face unlock, it's seamless, it's responsive. You don't have to mash your phone against your face anymore. It just works even at arm's length. And frankly, it shouldn't have taken this long to fix it as it's just a software thing, especially it's not that dedicated hardware setup like iPhone's Face ID. And on the same note, the fingerprint sensor is finally consistent and accurate. It's way more responsive and I haven't noticed any glitches. It's just solid. I really appreciate the gesture from Google getting these foundational features right, even for the older devices. All right, on to the new stuff. First up, design tweaks. Yeah, there are some tiny UI UX changes here and there. But let's be real, none of it really matters because as I mentioned, it's all getting revamped with that QPR1 update in September this year. So don't get too attached to these minor, smaller, soft energies. However, one subtle but noticeable improvement is the haptics, specifically with the haptic sliders. These aren't just little buzzers anymore. They actually respond to the movement and speed of your swipe at each step of the slider. You'll definitely notice them when you are messing with the volume or cranking up the brightness. It's a small detail, but it is a nice touch for that tactile feedback. Next, a very small change. Long pressing on the home screen now gives you an app list option which takes you directly to the app drawer. I'm not sure who asked for this. It's definitely not the fastest way to get into the apps. And frankly, it feels a bit unintuitive. Maybe there's a genius purpose that I'm missing, but for now, it's just there. Now, for some genuinely concrete and significant updates, we have a new notification feature called Live Updates. The idea is to keep you informed in real time, especially when you are using delivery apps and waiting for your food. No more unlocking your phone just to see how far your driver is. It will be there on your lock screen as well as in your notification panel, keeping you updated every time. This is set to expand and support more apps in the future. And I'm genuinely curious to see how widely adopted it becomes. Then there's long awaited battery health section and battery settings as well. If you are rocking a Pixel 8a or newer, you'll actually see your battery capacity, which is awesome. For us, Pixel 7 and older phones, it's more of a battery health assistant that supposedly helps your battery work longer. This will get activated the moment you put your phone to the charge and you can see the notification. And you also get these links to battery health articles, which are basically guides on how to improve your battery efficiency. I'm still a little miffed that Pixel 7 doesn't get actual capacity readout. And I can't think of any technical reason why Google hasn't included this in the older phones. Moving on, Android 16 has really expanded its security features to protect your data and privacy. We are seeing things like an identity check feature, enable this, set a trusted location, and if your device is outside that location, it will require biometrics to prevent account takeovers. And then there's advanced protection, which Google says provides the strongest defense against online attacks harmful apps, unsafe sites, scam calls, and all sort of unsecured sources. Google has been incredibly keen on adding these extra layers of security lately. We saw theft protection in Android 15 last year. And it's good to see that they are continuing that promise to keep your devices secured 
and protected this year as well. And this next one is huge. It's kind of a quality of life improvement. Yeah, you can now take screenshots in HDR. So if you are capturing a screenshot of an HDR photo or video, the screenshot will actually preserve the color quality and detail of that content. Of course, this will only work on the phones with the displays that support the HDR content. And next, let's just dive into the setting menu itself. There are a few minor design tweaks here. The search settings box, for example, is now a darker shade in dark mode compared to Android 15. And I have also noticed some subtle blur imprints after you navigate back from setting menu. It's more prominent in light mode than in dark mode. And then under the system settings, language settings is now called language and region. And based on your regional preferences, you can now select your preferred temperature units, Celsius or Fahrenheit and measurement systems, metric US or UK, small but practical. But now for the part that everyone cares about, battery and performance. To be honest, I haven't spent a ton of time with Android 16 yet, but I can confidently vouch for one thing. There is a significant increase in battery and performance of the phones running Android 16. My two-year-older Pixel 7 is acting like a brand new phone now. I'm consistently getting close to six plus hours of screen on time with mixed usage on mobile data and Wi-Fi. Let's look at the battery usage here. And if you see, I still have some percentage left and it has already given me six plus hours of screen on time with usage like YouTube and some browsing for an hour or so. And then there's lots of other smaller stuff. And then if you see in the end, the system apps also has taken some significant battery. And when it comes to device performance, flawless. No overheating noticed yet. Even with me using the phone more than usual for these updates that I'm working on, even without that Material 3 expressive design, the animations are fluid. Every interaction, every gesture, every app is working seamlessly. According to the Android.com, Google has improved the adaptive refresh rate to optimize battery life and fluid visuals. And I can feel it while using the phone. I'll definitely keep you posted in case I notice anything regarding the performance and the battery of the phone. And one more thing, Android 16 also introduced desktop windowing, which gives you a desktop-like experience on your tablets. You can now open, move, and resize multiple app windows just like a desktop for easier multitasking on your tablet. And don't forget to subscribe for all the future updates. I'll see you in the next one.